and that means it's time for a very special moment. Please rise and remove your cover for our national anthem sung by Allison Strufford. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave in the land of the free and the home of the brave <laughs> It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This round is Moto America Superbikes at Brainerd from beautiful Minnesota at the famed Brainerd International Raceway for our sixth of nine for 2023. It's Medallia Superbike race number two. And riders are ready to get this race going. An 18 lap affair scheduled. Hi everybody, I'm Greg White, standing alongside two time AMA champ Jason Pridmore. Now Jason, the big news coming out from yesterday to today, unfortunately after that big crash you saw in the tees, Cameron Bobier is out for this race. Yeah, sad news for all of us, you know, and the thing is is that we just got through, got started yesterday in race one and Cam made a small mistake in turn three and on the restart, just got high sided on the exit of turn three and uh, I think he's feeling some of the effects of a possible concussion and such. Yep. So uh, he was deemed unfit to ride and that's a, that's a shame for all of us. Yeah, concussion protocol here in Moto America. They checked him last night again today and he was deemed on this race. But let's take a look at race one highlights and what happened to Medallia Superbike race. And this is the first mistake that we saw and it started a little bit of a chain reaction there. You see PJ Jacobson and poor Matthew Skoltz had a hole in the side of his bike. The oil kind of came everywhere. So we had to restart this race. Ganya got the lead right off the bat with a hard charge in PJ Jacobson. And when they went back down to turn three again on that first lap, this is what happened to Cam Bobier, and it's just such an uncharacteristic thing to see from from Cam and uh, just hope that he makes a full recovery and he can be joining us at Pittsburgh in two weeks time. Now, Josh Heron looked like he's been struggling all weekend, but that guy never gives up. He finishes third in this race as Gagne went on to just get ahead of P.J. Jacobson. P.J. is looking strong and he will start from pole position today. Yeah, see, that's pretty incredible for P.J. Jacobson, but Gagne, in terms, look, like, here's what it means. We, we looked at our stats, Jay, and we looked at DNFs. Now, a lot of people are talking about Cameron Bobier being in this championship, but other than Jake Gagne, if you have more, three DNFs or more, no one's won the championship in Moto America in Medallia Superbike. So it's going to be a long, long battle. And I'm not sure Cameron Bobier is really thinking championship more than he is thinking just about race wins now. Yeah, race wins and getting healthy. I mean, that's yeah. the biggest thing. This Tyler's team has done a great job getting him comfortable on that BMW. He won races before I think any of us thought he would win races, even though we know the talent that Cam possesses. And I think that now when you look at going forward, how does this change the dynamic for Jake Gagne going forward? He had a, a real battle with Bobier through the year, but Josh Heron's sitting right there in third. He's he's ready. He's hungry and ready also. Second, yeah, that, actually. Second, yeah, yes, exactly. Second, and that's actually, the yes. whole thing. So we talked about Josh Heron. He has eight podiums in a row, and he's keeping this championship really close. And the thing about Heron is he's very tenacious, and that motorcycle he's on is outstanding. I love it. I think that this year I've seen a more mature Josh Heron on the racetrack as far as just getting down to business. He's always the first out in practice. He's grinding out as many laps as he can. 
He's never stopped and working. And I talked to him a little earlier today, and he was really happy with his pace this morning and warm up. And if he's a happy guy, these guys better start watching out because there's going to be a big red bike coming after those other two guys this morning or this afternoon. Oh yeah, and Josh Heron isn't 100% healthy, but he's definitely better. Let's get down to the third member of our broadcast team, Hannah Lopa, who's on the grid right now. You know, Greg, for Josh Heron, we're so used to seeing him in these Warhorse colors that we forget it's his first full season on this V4R. And it took him four races to really make his first podium appearance, but he has not been off the podium since. Josh, eight races in a row for you on the podium. What was it that kind of changed there? What was the pivotal moment this season that has contributed to this consistency? Oh, we've we've been there all year. You know, Barbara was the only one that we had the two, the two that uh, for some reason just didn't go well for us. So. Uh, the team's been working really hard. I've been working really hard at home, and, and we just got a really good bike right now. The V4R is doing awesome, and I'm super stoked. We also got this new sponsor, Tevent. Uh, team told us anybody that goes on the Tevent website and screenshots what it is, DMs it to HSBK Racing on Instagram, we're going to send you some swag, so blow them up. Best of luck out there, Josh. Always working the system is <laughs> Josh. I uh, love it. Absolutely love it. All right, let's take a look at the track map here. I love Brainerd International Raceway. It's two and a half miles long, built in the 1970s. Jason, tell us about it. Well, it's like you say, Greg, iconic place. These turns one and turns two, uh, the fastest that we're going to see. Hard breaking down into turn three where all the bad action was happening yesterday. Yeah. Then we're going to hope turns four, five, and six. Nice, nice set of S's there. Technical sections from turn seven all the way through to turn 12. Turn 12's had a lot of action today as well already. Then you flip it back to the right on your way to the to checkered flag. Cannot wait to see what race action brings us. We're going to step away. The World Super Sport Race winner in 2015, PJ, hoping to crack the top step of the podium for the first time in his Moto America Medallia Superbike career. And he's got a good shot at it. Stay tuned. Well, Greg and Jason were just talking about it. There is so much that could unfold in this one to sort of upset the apple cart just a little bit. They were talking about without Cameron Bobier there, does Jake Gagne change his approach a little bit? Uh, and with P.J. Jacobson, the way he's been running, that first win is by no means out of reach here. Yeah, it's just really close. Road America, close. Yeah. You know, when we went to Laguna, he was really fast there. And I think that uh, crash in that second qualifier right before the first race and having to rebuild the new bike, I think that kind of set him back a little bit. But he's been fast all weekend, and he's got to be feeling pretty good about yesterday's race. I mean, he was right there. I mean, just another bike link, and he was able to – be able to take the shot on the last lap. And I think for Jake Gagne, he has such a big points lead now. You know, I think there's really no pressure. He almost has a, a two-race lead, and he can still just keep trying to get those wins and add those points. If he makes a mistake, he has a little bit of a buffer. A little bit of a buffer, and uh, if he has somebody that's really hounding him, it's not going to hurt him too bad to let him through. And it might be this guy. I mean, Matthew Skoltz uh, earlier in the weekend was really struggling, but he came alive in qualifying, second qualifying, qualified fourth. And then, of course, in that race yesterday, got that punctured radiator. Uh, so he's out there with something to prove. This place hasn't been kind to him, and I think he wants to go out and beat it. Yeah, and you always, when you struggle early in the weekend, you want to finish strong. And for him and the team, they really dug deep after Friday and came out swinging Saturday morning. And unfortunately for him, he missed all that data for yeah. race one to make changes changes going into this race so it's a little bit unknown for him what his bike is going to feel like those last couple laps just saw brandon posh there just clapping just jacking himself up a little bit and he was wicked quick in the opening uh, half of that race yesterday then faded so if they've been able to figure out what caused that fade make some adjustments don't count him out he was really impressively quick and you know he's been fast all weekend yeah. and qualifying yesterday's race didn't go as planned but he got a really good start yesterday and you know i feel like each superbike race for him is just going to be able to, to learn so much so if he can get another good start that's going to be the key yeah. him getting another good start and hopefully stay with those top guys you know a couple more laps he did yesterday this and, of course, never count out the Joshes, Josh Heron or Josh Hayes. So that's what we're looking at here is Medallia Superbikes Race 2 here at BIR. We're ready for it. Medallia Superbike coverage is brought to you by Medallia, the pioneer in customer and employee experience. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit Geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. 
Medallia Superbike racers on course for their warm-up lap. Of course, race number two going on here in our sixth round of nine for this championship. And an opportunity for us to take a look at the newly revised grid, Jason, because Cameron Bovier had been on pole, but he's not racing. And that shifts P.J. Jacobson, Jake Gagne over, and Matthew Skoltz up to row one. It certainly does. And how about Brandon Poss coming from there on second row inside? Escalante and Heron will be next to him. I like Heron's position there on that part of the track. Hayes, Fong, and Gillum. Then we have Ashton Yates, Corey Alexander, who's had a really strange weekend this weekend, but basically on a whole new bike. And Flinders will be just outside of him. Then we have Justin Meese, Lampkin, and De Silva. Then Schmatter, Burke, and Schumacher are going to round out your field. Oh, sorry, I forgot Manny Segura. Manny Segura is out there as well. 18 laps scheduled for race number two. A good opportunity for the riders to get nice and warmed up, get suspension warmed up. A lot of people forget about that whole technique and make sure that you are ready to roll as riders come out of the last corner and they're going to form the grid. We have some overhead shots from our Lucas Oil helicopter. Great shots provided by them. There's Josh Hayes, number four, just making his way in the right part of your screen, but all eyes on the 99 of P.J. Jacobson, who had an unbelievable run yesterday with the number one plate just in front of him. And he could be dangerous if P.J. Jacobson can get away to the lead. The question is, is how balanced is the bike throughout the entire race as they continue to develop the Titler Cycles M1000 RR BMW. Of course, the development cycle on that number one plate been around a while, Jay. Yeah, it really has. And we're going to see here, look where Heron is on the outside. That's where everybody runs down that straightaway. So he's going to have a lot of grip out there. See if he can fire that number two Ducati into the lead. There we go. Clutches are out, and it looks like a good launch from Skultz on the 11. He's right behind Jake Gagne. So Skultz in second spot, a great launch from that row. And now P.J. Jacobson is going to try to go up the inside. No. And how about the Vision Wheel m 4 star Suzuki in, four, in third spot with Heron in fifth. Yeah, Brandon Posh there in fourth. And uh, they're all breaking down into this turn three for the first time. Posh going to hold that position. Heron runs a little bit wide. That's going to allow, looks like, Escalante to go up underneath him. But Gagne gets the start he needs. Matthew Skultz, who didn't get those laps yesterday, Greg. We talk about that all the time. I spoke with him this morning. They're continuing to try to keep making that bike better for him. Matthew Skultz slots himself into second. And uh, he's seeing his first race laps right now of the weekend, really. Yeah, and the incident with the rider behind him, P.J. Jacobson, off that first lap, it was P.J. Sprocket that went into the radiator and another puncture in the oil cooler. So those two are stacked on top of each other right behind the forks. And that's what caused the motorcycle to start leaking oil, the collision with P.J. And could, I saw the radiator, Jason, and you can see the teeth marks <laughs> gouging out the aluminum of that radiator. The photo that you showed me of that earlier, I can't imagine what that impact must have been like. So, but right now, this is maybe the thing I've been most impressive with the guys that have been trying to chase Gagne for a couple years, as you see Heron slot himself into that fourth place spot. They are starting to learn what this first pace, uh, race pace looks like on the first lap. You can see both Skultz and PJ Jacobson have gone with Gagne. And uh, really impressive to see Matthew Skoltz doing this well, good of a job this early. Now we're going to see if Heron moving himself up into fourth, if he can close that gap to these top three. I think for Skoltz right now, he's proven himself, proving him something to himself, but he's got to take a deep breath. Don't force the issue. Just be there. Because we know that Gagne, who learned from Hayes, is Skoltz already up and out of the saddle for the moment. Getting deep on the brakes. He's got to keep it nice and smooth, Jay. But it's it's all about these first five laps for Gagne and really trying to force the issue. As yeah. we look at P.J. Jacobson in third spot, what, we, what was so impressive about P.J. was how well this BMW worked late in the race. Yeah, no, no question. The bike looked really, really good all the way through to the end of the race. And uh, for P.J., that, that race yesterday had to give him so much confidence because I can't remember a time, Greg, maybe you will remind me of P.J. being that close to any of the leaders at the end of the race the way he was yesterday. And uh, now he's got Matthew Skoltz to deal with. And, you know, you heard P.J. say yesterday that he wished he would have struck on Gagne a little bit earlier, possibly when the tires were a little bit newer. And uh, you, you got to wonder if that's going to ring through his brain 
right now as he draws it to the back of Skultz, who is still on the back of Gagne. So for P.J. Jacobson, maybe making a, ma a race move early is something that he might want to think about. Now looking back at Josh Heron, I'm looking, let's see what kind of time he does this time. Because it looks like he's trying to draw these guys back. First flying lap. 31-5 for Gagne, 31-7 for the next three guys right behind him. So the top four guys are just drawing away for that battle for fifth. DJ Jacobson makes the move around Skultz. So Skultz still in third, going to attack back, Hannah. A strong start to the race for Matthew Skultz. And you know, we've seen him face so many different kinds of adversity and a lot of things have been out of his control that we haven't actually seen the progress that the team has been working so hard to make. And he's had some bad luck and you know, at Laguna Seca, we saw him at the end of the race doing some of his fastest laps of the entire race, and now he finally has the opportunity to showcase how much work they've done and what he is capable of, because they do feel like they put a really solid package together for Matthew, and he knows he's the rider to get this bike back on the podium. It's just a matter of having some luck on his side, too. Yeah, and there's been some massive changes to the actual motorcycle he rides this season, too, Jay. Yeah, no, exactly right. And, and the bad luck, Hannah, that you talk about is so true. I talked to him, like I said this morning, and he's like, yeah, I've made a couple mistakes. And the team's made a couple mistakes. And, you know, together, you know, that happens. But we've also had some, some pretty bad luck. And I would agree with that analysis of his year so far. He's put some great rides in. And this guy rides as hard as anybody. But let's get back to the front here. And we start thinking about what P.J. Jacobson is doing. He gets by Skultz. And now he is drawing up onto the back end here of Jake Gagne. He goes fastest first split in the first three laps that we've done here, does P.J. Jacobson. So again, that Tyler Cycle BMW looks really, really good under P.J. Jacobson at the moment as Josh Heron continues to try to close in. So here's that fast turn one. Now the guys are going to click up to fifth gear. They actually are wide open on the entry to this turn. Some of the super bikes will back shift. Some of them will not through the middle of this corner and go back to fourth. Then they will go all the way back down to the gearbox, down to second gear for turn three. And look who's coming. That number two is getting closer and closer right now. 31-4 that last time through for P.J. Jacobson. Fastest lap of the race so yep. far for the 99. As Gagne continues to set the pace, Skultz, Heron, so we had a couple of Yamahas, a BMW, and a Ducati all in the mix. And boy, Heron, if he got a better start, you kind of wonder what's going on because he is closing so fast onto Skultz. Then you have Posh in fifth, Josh Hayes in sixth, Escalante, Bobby Fong. Hayes has gone through. Okay, so ha Hayes has gone through Posh, so now he moves himself into fifth place. We'll see what the veteran Hayes filling in for Cameron Peterson, who is out for the remainder of the season, had wrist surgery, hoping to return next year, the healthiest he's ever been and prepared to race in Medallion Superbike. So Hayes filling in for this round. We'll see how things go moving forward. 14 and a half laps to go in Medallion Superbike. Race number two, there it wow. goes. Heron up the inside. Right, a really that was, clean. That was a great pass. That was super impressive. I was looking at that just out my window, and he came from a long way back and made that pass stick and looked clean doing so. So Josh Heron on the move. He's trying to make quick work of the guys to try to get going forward. Look at the speed that Matthew Skultz carried through turn one. And let's see this again, Greg. This is on the left side of your screen. You can see how far back Heron came. Gave Skultz plenty of room, got down the inside, was still able to get to the apex of that corner, get it squared up and out of that turn just as you like to do it. Heron's moving forward still. Yeah, he's moving forward a little bit wide. In that last corner, here comes Josh Hayes, too. He's off in the distance. He's on the number four. Fast, That's fastest lap of any of the leaders that last time through was Josh Hayes. He's on the fresh and lean progressive Yamaha. The Warhorse. Oh, Josh almost just went on. He's off into the dirt. He got, he got kicked out of the seat. And just as soon as we start talking about him, Josh made a small mistake, and uh, it's too bad. This guy yesterday, Greg, for the last five laps of the race was the quickest rider on the on the track. So Josh is going to be frustrated with that one there because he's just gone 31-4, his fastest lap of the race. He was uh, he was back in eighth or ninth at the beginning, so he made quick work of everybody. Let's have another look. Just gets in there, and everything looks pretty normal at this point. Just turns the throttle on. Oh, I mean, it was, was just like, a that was like dab. It was like a dab of throttle. Yeah, that was that was actually a little bit strange. It was strange when it happened live, and I thought I'd see something that would that would jump out jump out at me a lot more. And uh, yeah, that didn't that didn't look like much. We have a two horse race that's getting ready to turn into a three horse race as Gagne being hounded by P.J. Jacobson 
in the 31s. Josh Heron behind him last time they went by the stripe said his fastest lap of the race a 31 4 7 8. The fast lap of the race is a 31 4 3 1 by PJ on lap number three. They've completed five. And here's the thing that you got to keep in mind. PJ ro rolled behind Gagne all day yesterday. He's in the exact same position he is in today. The biggest problem he has is that when the number two gets to the back of him, he's not going to wait around. He is going to do whatever he can to get by the 99 immediately. He's going to want to make quick work of P.J. Jacobson. So P.J.'s got to have some eyes in the back of his head and know that that's going to be coming. And Jason, for P.J., they've made some serious progress, and he's definitely kind of coming into his own here. They made some changes for better feeling at these higher temperatures we're seeing on the track. Yesterday it was greasy and the pace was kind of slow at the front overall. They softened the bike up and made some engine braking settings to kind of mitigate that. And he was so happy he was able to stay with Jake all, all race long. He's just really trying to take advantage of grip early on and maybe try to make a move earlier if he can. Yeah, well, right now, the, the move that's going to be coming is going to be Josh Heron. And it, it could happen right down here in turn 12. Uh, a little bit too far back this time. Got a little throttle happy though. He a couple did. corners ago and <laughs> went sideways when Hannah was giving her a report. Yeah, Greg almost jumped out of his seat when, he saw, when you saw that. And yeah, Heron for sure up out of the seat. But now he's there. You know how much confidence it gives a guy like Josh Heron with his, the skills that he's got to know that he's reeled these two back in. And uh, now we're going to be able to see. But look how strong PJ is through turn one down towards turn two. Really strong through there. And then Gagne is uh, is about that equal as they go through the middle of turn two. And now Heron is all over the back of the 99. The Skull still trying to hang in there with these guys. Yeah, he hasn't lost total touch yet. He's not in the draft of these riders, but Skultz is trying and he is pushing so hard. Now that Heron's arrived, the question is, what's his plan going to be? He knows that if he roughs up PJ and makes a mistake, they're going to give Gagne a big gap. If I'm Heron right now, I'm kind of hoping that PJ is going to take a shot and leave that door open. And that would allow Josh Heron to slide on through, possibly into second place or even to lead this race. I just feel like Heron's a little more calculated than we have seen him in the past. And I think that riding these super bikes, and especially this motorcycle, that I don't think is an easy bike to ride by any stretch. I think that what you're going to see here is he'll be calculated when he makes it. And he, he understands the importance of he wants to get through on PJ, but he doesn't want to create a gap big enough to where he's got to try to run down Gagne again and use up that rear tire trying to get there. Josh Heron still in third place has made up a ton of ground, Hannah. He has, and he said Saturday's all season have kind of been a struggle for them, and getting the laps from race one is really helpful to set them up a lot better for Sunday, and that's why he tends to do a bit better on Sundays. They added some power where he was suffering under acceleration, and he's got a much better sector one today. He cleaned it up and was able to find a little bit of time, so hopefully he can continue to utilize that to chip away and get around PJ and maybe Jake for the lead. Yeah, especially with that Ducati. We know it's got a ton of horsepower and leveraging the power available, but also managing the spin of the tire because you can easily feed too much power electronically to these motorcycles and really make that tire spin. But you can see a little bit of time that Heron lost through one and two. He was able to make it up under the brakes in turn number three as PJ Jason yesterday talked about, you know, making an early lunge. But here we are with ten and a half laps to go and a little bit of rear end movement for PJ Jacobson on the ninety nine. Going to lose a little bit of drive there. Yeah, we didn't see that yesterday. Where did Heron, Heron go? go? Heron is, where did he go? I know, Matthew, I'm looking at my window. Heron is slowing the bike down. He's looking down at the bike oh, on the right side of your screen no. there. And I just got, was just getting ready to say that Matthew Skultz was the quickest rider of the four that last time. So I'm not sure what's going on with Heron. It looks like he's going to pull off the track, though, Greg. Something has happened. What a shame. Oh, no. What a shame. Uh, maybe he's going to try to stay out there. No, I think looking down, there must be something that he's feeling. Double checking, so <sighs> quite a huge possibility the podium streak is over for oh, the number two. Such a bummer. He felt something on that machine. We'll see if he ends up pulling into the pits. Yeah, he's still looking down. Is the number two on that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati Pentagali V4R. So for Heron fans, your heart's breaking right now as he was in such a great position on his Ducati to challenge for that win. Josh Hayes goes by. So Hayes back in the ninth position. Heron has drifted all the way back to 10th spot. So Gagne still leads. Jacobson by a tenth of a second. That relegates Matthew Skoltz up to third. Brandon Posh in fourth. And how about Bobby Fong in fifth place? 
So Josh Hayes on that fresh and lean progressive Yamaha in ninth spot after he ran off the track. Here's a good look at fourth place Brandon Posh. Yeah, let's talk about this guy for a minute, okay? Because at the beginning of the year, he was sitting with a broken back and out. He was originally going to ride stock thousand. And uh, he ends up getting drafted into this spot after Tony Elias retired at Road America. Brandon gets brought in to take this spot on, and he's running Lead fourth. change. Sorry, oh, wow. lead change. P.J. Jacobson has taken over the lead as Jake Gagne is starting to lose touch with P.J. Jacobson. And now it could be that the number one plate is going to fall into the clutches of Matthew Skulls. So whatever was going on, P.J. Jacobson had had enough. They dropped their times down to 32 twos. And now we'll see what Gagne's got in terms of lap times and how much time he's lost as they come across start finish line. P.J. goes 31-5. So drop seven tenths. Gagne 32-3. Skulls a 31-8. So lead change and P.J. Jacobson takes over the spot. Yeah, now you got to see what Gagne's got. Was it a mistake? Uh, that, that was made by Gagne or I mean 31 5. I mean Greg that's he was eight tenths quicker on that lap So we knew PJ had some pace But to just all of a sudden drop into the 31s mid 31s at that right off the bat is we're gonna get a look at it here You're gonna see Gagne's tight as they entered turn ex Exited turn three PJ just goes by him as they run down to turn number four slides up underneath Gagne hammers down the last part of the lap but it looks like Gagne is trying to get back to him. So not sure if there was a mistake, maybe a false neutral or something that Gagne caught. But it looks like he's trying to respond right now. P.J. Jacobson, a multi-time Super Sport winner here in Moto America. Going for the big one. In control right now as Gagne drifting back. Left part of your screen is Josh Heron, who had an issue talking to his team right now and snaps that podium streak and also ramifications for the rider that was closest to the number one in the championship, Jake Gagne. And if you're Jake Gagne, Jason, you've got to ask yourself the question, how hard do I push to win this race with the championship just ahead of me? Jake's a fighter, but he also is a smart rider. He's not going to give anything away for free. I spoke to him this morning, Greg, also, and talked to him about this was the first time we'd ever heard him speaking about the championship. How is that going to change now that Cambobier is out? And now I think there was a little bit more of a relaxation of I could just get back to doing what I know what to do and just not have to overthink things. I don't think he was that guy anyways. You know him as good as anybody. He doesn't really overthink that process too much. If he feels like he's got a fighting chance to go after P.J. Jacobson, he's going to do it. And he's going to do it at a, at a, at a risk that's not going to put him in, in jeopardy of doing something silly. Both of his main title contenders right now have had horrendous weekends, right? With Bobier out in both races, and now with Heron out. It'll be interesting to see if that even goes on his board, though. Well, unfortunately for Josh Heron fans, he is out right now, Hannah. He is, and it looks like the team is still trying to diagnose what exactly is going on. I talked to Josh, and he said he's not really understanding fully the scope of what happened, just something mechanic-wise that caused him to make the decision to retire from the race. Obviously, it was significant enough to stop a rider as astute as Josh to, to pull out of this race. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Heron ride through all kinds of problems, but he also has been riding long enough to know and has enough whereabouts and talent and skill to know, hey, listen, I can't continue on with this motorcycle. It's not working properly. So unfortunately, Heron's out. Mechanics working on the bike. So our focus is on this guy. Tightler Cycles, BMW's PJ Jacobson with a 7 tenth of a second lead currently over your national champion. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things right now for PJ Jacobson. He's just got to keep putting in these laps that he's putting in. As you look a little further back, Bobby Fong, Brandon Posh, and Corey Alexander. We haven't got to see it. We were just starting to talk about Posh. He has now been caught by Bobby Fong, who's riding the Dave Anthony Wrench Cycled R1, a bike that uh, David actually told Bobby to, to jump on at the ridge. They made a small switch within the team as Dave Anthony is now riding Super Sport. And Posh just behind now for the 23. We saw it yesterday what Corey did to that bike on Friday morning here at Brainerd. That bike went through turn one on its side into the wall. The team has been working all night and all day, that, all the rest of the day that day and night to get a bike put underneath him. It's got a little bit different frame than the one he had originally, Greg. So it's taken a different setup for him to really get this bike where he wants it. So for Corey, you got to think, 
I mean, there's fourth place just in front of him. This is a, this is a good job for Corey Alexander. And again, another Tyler's BMW. And Bobby Fong, at the pace he's going right now, he's doing 32 fives. He's, he's virtually matching the pace of the leaders in front of him, but he's got 6.6 .6 to the win and five back to third place. So he continues to push. And how about the number four? Just behind the 69. I want to make note that Josh Hayes has done the second fastest lap of the race. <laughs> PJ Jacobson goes 131-431. Hayes earlier on did a 131-494. He's 48 years old. And this guy is and he's still charging. Yeah, he's going to continue to go forward. This guy just doesn't have any give up. And the thing is that, about Josh, he just loves riding so much. I mean, he he's going to be mad that, that whatever happened to him there in turn five happened. Uh, but the main thing is, is he just loves riding. And, and you're going to see him probably methodically get his way through on Hayden Gillum here. And then uh, go chasing after Richie Escalante. It's a little bit surprising to see Richie this far off the pace here. And there goes Hayes under braking on Hayden Gillum. That's for position. Hayden Gillum having an outstanding weekend here at Brainerd International Raceway. Hayden doing triple duty this weekend. He's still got another race to come in Mission King of the Baggers. He's busy with Superbike, Stock Thousand. And on that number 69 motorcycle, he's doing great as they continue to develop that Disrupt Racing GSXR 1000. I mean, Josh just didn't get the start he wanted, and he has podium pace. He's running, obviously, very fast laps. He's coming back through some guys here. He's still living in the 32s. The leaders are 32-0, 31-9 for Gagne last time by. But uh, for Josh Hayes, 32-1 his last time through. Yeah, incredibly fast. As fast as anyone on the racetrack is Hayes. And he had to race a race just before this in Super Sport. So he's already done a handful of laps and then had to get off the bike and go straight to a chair and relax for a moment and start this medallia superbike race number two and there goes hayes he eases around the 54 vision wheel m4x star suzuki's richie escalante who's had quite a season himself not the best brainerd not the progression that we expected to see from escalante but we have to imagine when we get to the up and down pit race in our next venue that Richie Escalante is close to podium contention these days. Yes, well, Hayden Gillum, this is the best weekend we've seen for him also on the Superbike. And he said the neat thing is they've just been getting this bike as he goes up underneath Escalante for that position. For Hayden Gillum and the Disrupt Racing team, he said they've just been trying to get this bike easier for him to ride. He said it was such a handful with some of the electronic issues that he was having, mostly just keeping the front end of the bike on the ground. And uh, that, that's that been a problem for him. And it looked like we had a little dust out there, didn't it? Yeah, it's Corey Alexander. Uh, unfortunately, for oh, in sixth geez. place, Corey. And that's another bike that's yard sailed for Corey. And that is unfortunate for the Stock 1000 champion, Corey Alexander. And that's going to move Hayes and the rest of the field up a notch as P.J. Jacobson continues to lead with four and a half laps to go. The gap holding steady at about half a second or so between himself and Gagne as those two now have pulled away from Matthew Stoltz who drifts back behind P.J. by just 1.8 seconds. Bobby Fong starting to close down on Matthew Stoltz as well there's the number 50 of bobby fong what a ride what a ride on the wrench motorcycles that's a of course gagne's bike amazing from last year taking yep. bobby a little bit of course fong already with three medallia superbike wins to his career back in 2020 and fong has won here at brainerd international raceway in the past he won in Mission King of the Baggers last season. He's got that race coming up after this one. So he's going back to back, much like we saw Josh Hayes go from Super Sport to Super Bike. Bobby Fong's going from Super Bike to a Bagger. So that's going to be quite the step. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's quite a different motorcycle. Can't even imagine the difference it takes to ride a Super Bike versus a Mission King of the Baggers 620 pound machine. Bobby Fong in fourth place. Back to our leader, PJ Jacobson. Jason, take a look at his riding and tell me what you're seeing. Well, the consistency, that's the main thing is PJ. This guy has been around the world, Greg. He's been in BSB, he's been in World Super Sport. He's won at both those levels. He's won over here in our Super Sport category. Almost won the championship, what, three or four years ago in that battle with Bobby Fong. It came down to a couple of the last races. This kid rides hard, and uh, this team has made him very, very comfortable. He's doing a tremendous job. Gagne is still trying to get in there. It's, 
He's clawed it back down to a half a second. It hasn't gone to one full second yet this whole race. So PJ's work isn't done here, but the simplicity of which PJ rides and as hard as he rides and makes it look easy, uh, that's what he's got to keep doing. And uh, it's a half a second, a 32-4 for PJ that last time by for Jake Gagne at 32-1. Catching PJ is one thing, but passing him is going to be another because I feel that these first two corners, PJ's super strong, and I don't think Gagne can get close enough to him to do a pass into turn three. And at that point, the BMW accelerates so well off of these, like, turns three, four, five, six. I think it's going to be hard for Gagne to get up alongside of him anywhere to really make a pass. It's going to have to be turn 12, I think, if it, uh, if it gets done at all. Closes up a little under braking. PJ able to get the bike turned, of course. A lot of dirt track experience from PJ Jacobson growing up. And Jay, back in 2015, if you remember his World Super Sport career, PJ, he switched manufacturers in the middle of the season and nearly won that World Super Sport championship. He did. He went from a Kawasaki to a Honda. Yeah. And was able to win a couple on a Honda. Very talented motorcycle rider, one of the tops. Yeah, but he's he's closed in right now, hasn't he? You can see Gagne is now closed into the back of PJ Jacobson a little bit more. So he's starting to take some out of him here as we get with about three laps to go. I mean, yeah, they're gonna have two laps to come by this time by. The thing is, is PJ's just putting pressure on as far as staying consistent, running these these fast laps. Bobby Fong with the fastest second split of his race. See a yellow flag out there in the background. Yeah, Trying to get a down. catch to see who that was. So two laps to go for PJ Jacobson. And Jay, look at the throttle control of this one. Yeah, you're going to see this thing. This is years and years of experience. It's that balance of throttle control, letting the bike hang out a little bit, and allowing the electronics to work as well. And that's what you see PJ doing as he works that bike through turn three. He's just now gone through turn two. He's got about a lap and a three quarters left now, Greg. And Gagne is going to continue to make PJ earn this one all the way to the end. And back behind them, Matthew Skultz has only got a 1.4 second advantage over Bobby Fong for that final spot on the podium. Fong is on the charge and taking about a second a lap out of Skultz. So if Skultz has anything left, he's got to start answering. Bobby Fong going 31-6. Yeah. I mean, he's going his fastest laps at 31-5. Look at this, 31-6 now. So for Bobby Fong, he has literally got Matthew Skultz in the gun sights right now, doing everything he can to try to catch the back of the Westby Racing rider. And just looking out the window, Greg, it looks like it's gotten even closer in this lap. DJ Jacobson well in control and out front. He knew he had to take a shot earlier on in this race. He was able to get it done, and now he's controlling the pace. If Gagne has any idea that he wants to win this race, whatever he's thinking about, it's time to get it done. Through the final corner, and the white flag awaits the final lap of the race. Are we going to see a new race winner in the Medallia Superbike class this year? And as Bobby Fong is so close to Matthew Skultz, as Skultz on the Westby Racing Machine trying to hold on to that final podium spot, and Bobby Fong trying to get a podium for the Wrench Motorcycle, David Anthony and his crew would be through the roof if full he's able second, to pull it off. It was a full second quicker that last lap, Bobby Fong over Matthew Skultz. And Jake Gagne again tries drawing up on the back of PJ. Oh, gonna, oh. We, have a, we have a back marker up ahead there. Looks like Zach Schumacher on the 90 but look at this bobby fong has drawn all the way up to the back of that westby number 11 of matthew skultz is this storybook ending going to happen for bobby fong or can matthew skultz who had such a great start to this race hold on for that final spot of the podium lap traffic and they closed up and gagne trying to go up the inside of schumacher and pj still there but gagne he looks like he could be within striking distance but he's running out of racetrack to make a move it's just a matter of how clean he can get through all this but i just think pj's too good out of the chicane he's too good in the next left right for gagne to get up alongside going down into turn 12 although gagne is closer this time he's got to absolutely clean this turn here but pj strong out of there gagne just a little bit too far back Gagne with nothing doing in that corner. Only one to do it. Is this going to be for PJ Jacobson, the first win of Medallia Superbike? He comes onto the front straightaway. He pulls the trigger of that BMW to the flag. He goes, and PJ Jacobson takes the win over Gagne. And now it's that battle, and Matthew Skultz is able to hold on.
for third spot over Bobby Fong. And that was just a tenth of a second difference between Skultz and Fong. Brandon Posh in fifth place. Hayden Gillum in sixth. Richie Escalante in seventh. We wait for Josh Hayes. We heard he ran off the track late in that race, the last lap for Hayes. He comes across the line in eighth. Ashton Yates in ninth. Wow. Well, we're witnessing a bit of history here at Brainerd International Raceway. We saw it coming yesterday, and P.J. Jacobson able to get it done. Incredible. And he should be pumped. That was amazing. Finally did it. It almost looks like his airbag went off. <laughs> it, doesn't, it almost looks like it has. He was celebrating so much. So perhaps. happy. So, and he deserves every bit of it. As you see Ashton Yates pull up alongside of him. PJ's finally got that first win. Kind of felt like it was coming, Greg. He's been riding really well all year this year. And uh, for PJ, it's going to make him and that team really happy. And maybe soften the blow a little bit about Cameron Bobby and not being able to race today. Yeah, and Corey Alexander. Yeah. Writing another one off. So... That's definitely, uh, you know, they say racing solves every, or winning solves everything, Jason. And P.J. <laughs> Jacobson tires. for the Titler Cycle Racing Team got it done today. What a team in their second year, putting two of their racers on the top step of the podium. We'll hear from P.J. and find out how he was able to do it after this. Well, Roger, we had talked about it early. We both just sort of had a feeling that PJ could be doing something pretty special here. And uh, then that was sort of backed up after the run he put in yesterday, uh, just staying right with Jake. And uh, man, he laid that pass on and Jake came after him, but PJ held him off. Yeah, and what wow. a great ride for, for PJ. He's got to feel good, get that first Superbike win when you've tried so long. and. You know, it was great to see last year, you could just tell how hard he was riding, yeah. you know, trying yeah. to get to the front. And uh, this year he's been close, he's been working hard, and you could just tell at Road America. If you go back to Road America, that second Superbike race, when he was within a second of uh, Josh Heron for the win, how disappointed he was to be that close to the right. win. And, you know, it's it's also, too, for, for PJ, when your teammate, like Cam Bobier, is is winning races, and you're and you know what i mean and and you want to win races too but your teammate is and you're not and it's a really tough spot so it's great to see pj finally get the rewarded with that win and and he earned it too right i mean he oh, beat yeah. the champ straight up so uh you know great ride by pj and you know also equally is you know impressive is tyler cycle bmw oh, for a impressive. team that's yeah you know Last year was their first full year. Now this year they get two different winners in the Superbike class. I mean, it's it's just incredible what they've done. Well, it is. And, and uh, you know, last year you mentioned it. His speed last year was sort of inconsistent. You know, he'd be really fast here and then he'd struggle. This year he's always been quick. I mean, he's really been in the hunt. But he just, he was on it. And look at Matthew Skultz, man. After the weekend he's had up on the podium. But let's talk Bobby Fong. You made a comment to me. And, yeah, we can argue all day long. Okay, Cameron. Bobier it, it wasn't in this and this and that, but Bobby Fong less than four seconds off of PJ Jacobson and Jake Gagne on a privateer bike. Yeah, I just incredible on a bike that doesn't have a lot of time. I mean, you talk about last year, we go back to Jake Gagne was winning every race by four or five seconds. You know, Bobby yeah. Fong is within, you know, four seconds today and, uh, you know, ends up fourth and almost getting on the podium and just great ride by him. And hopefully, we talk about how close this comp this class is this year. Hopefully, this is a sign that we can see Bobby toward the front. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they got something figured out. This track yeah, is really technical. We're set up is key. Uh, so, if he can carry this momentum into the rest of the season. And he was really fast late in the race, throwing down 131s. Uh, uh, and closing it up like that. So really impressive stuff. Cannot wait to hear from these riders in the podium and to take us through that and through the rest of this race. Let's head over to Greg White and Jason Pridmore and uh, looking forward to once again to hearing from these riders. National Raceway, P.J. Jacobson gets it done. And here's a look at how he did it. That was the pass for the lead for the moment. And we thought Gagne was going to fight right back on him. But P.J. was able to hold on. Well, that's really the first time we saw it. So that was a legit move. He just went down the inside, ran it out a little bit, but was able to still square the bike up. And 
out accelerate Gagne off of turn three and beat him to turn four. And Gagne congratulating the New York native PJ Jacobson in his big victory. So the results show three tenths of a second margin of victory. But how about that one tenth between Skultz and Bobby Fong? Skultz really did such a fine job to hang on. Fong was on a charge. Even though he was given a 1.64 second penalty for cutting the track on the last lap, Jason. Oh, is that what Fong. happened? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So how about Brandon Posh in fifth? What a result. What a result. Well, let's get right down to Hannah, who has our Medallia Superbike Race 2 winner. And for PJ Jacobson, it is the first of his career and with the Tyler Cycle Racing Team. PJ, probably a lot of emotions on that cool down lap, but you were really strong start to finish. What was it that got you to this point? Yeah, you know, it's just uh, yesterday it was like one tenth from Jake, and then, you know, what happened with Cam was, uh, you know, it, it sucks because he would be here too, you know, but. Um, yeah, just tried to had to take the advantage today and try to go for the win. You know, everybody kept saying, "Yeah, you could do it today. You could do it." But uh, it was uh, it was a hard one, and you know, it's hard to beat uh, these guys out here. So um, very happy with my whole team. They did a great job, you know, and uh, everybody. I just can't thank them enough. It's uh, it's been very very uh, motivating, you know. Some people back at home, uh, you know, motivating me too, and um, you know, just keeping this whole thing together. So. I want to thank Michael Kiley for giving me the opportunity all the time to, uh, to ride this BMW and uh, my whole uh, side of my crew did a fantastic job. Take me through that pass you made on Jake for the lead. Yeah, so I was like uh, eyeing it up, eyeing it up and then finally just, uh, you know, held it on a bit more and just kind of went for it. it. It really just mattered on my drive coming out of one and I finally, uh, he was spinning a little bit and I had the opportunity so I had to do it and not sit there like yesterday's race and um, I don't know the Last couple laps were pretty crazy though, because my tire, I was like all over the place and <laughs> I was trying to stand up, go in the corner a little bit less uh, with the uh, lean angle and it was just difficult. But uh, I was trying hard and he kept the pressure on me uh, the whole time. PJ Jacobson, today's a race winner. Second place today is our defending champion, Jake Gagne. Big round of applause for those guys for sure. Jake, quite the battle there with PJ. Kept you honest throughout, but you just didn't quite have it. Tell us about it. Yeah, it was a fun race. Um, you know, I knew I couldn't shake him, and I don't remember about halfway through he came by. Um, I figured, you know, I could see if I could follow him and see if I could kind of learn what, what he was doing a little differently. And um, right when he passed me, he pulled. He put his head down. And I was like, for it, it was everything I had to kind of keep it there, and I kind of just kind of worked around a few things, figured it out, was able to almost just stay in touch if something happened. But, uh, I mean, congrats to PJ. He rode his ass off. He... Uh, so it's hard. You don't very often see a super bike that sideways around the whole track. So <laughs> it was a fun day. Uh, good to have all the fans out here at Brainerd. Thanks to Attack Performance, Yamaha, um, Progressive, uh, Rai, Alpine Stars, all friends, family watching at home. And uh, yeah, second place, still a good day. It was a lot of fun, like I said, racing with these guys. So Glad to see a very happy Jake Gagne after his second place finish. And rounding out our podium, Matthew Skoltz. How important was it for you and for your team to get this motorcycle back on the podium after, you know, kind of the up and down season we've seen you having? Yeah, I mean, we haven't had the best of luck so far this season, so it feels awesome to be back up on the podium. I mean, I had to dig deep those last five laps. I was barely hanging on. Um, obviously, Laguna had a massive high side, injured my shoulder. So the last couple of weeks, I haven't been able to really train, and I really felt it, yeah, you know, I've got to give credit to Bobby Fong. I mean, that guy was putting phenomenal laps down. He was catching me almost a second a lap, but I managed to hold on. But a huge thank you to the Westby guys. I mean, the season hasn't been easy for us, but it really showed that when our backs are up against the wall that we're able to to kind of fight and get back up on the podium. Um, I know that a couple of guys weren't here, so we were a little bit lucky there, but th I think that this will kind of help us get back up to where we should be and give us the, the confidence to challenge for the podium as the rest of the season. And a, a big thank you so much to the Westby guys, Trig, to, to, to my wife, Ethan, that's kind of helped me and my family watching back home. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Big congratulations to Matthew Skoltz. What a race, guys. Yeah, and I think really when you look at it, Matthew Skoltz proved to himself what he can do on those first couple laps. We'll have more coverage from Medallia Superbike race number two here from Brainerd International Raceway when we come back. Lots to talk about from this race, certainly. And uh, uh, I think that's a really good point uh, that... that uh, Jason just made about uh, obviously Matthew Skoltz. He's needed to show that he can stay with these guys early. 
And he did that, didn't he? Uh, there, oh, there's no question about that. He said at the end he was holding on, so he may have used it up a little bit. Uh, but, man, they made some huge gains from the first session here to this race. Huge gains. And, you know, Matt got a really good start. And we've kind of seen that previous, you know, not the first lap not being very good for Matt. But today right. he got a great start. And, and mid-race, you know, just watching it, he closed it. He dropped back and then mid-race cl was closing that gap back down until the last five laps. So I think... He would have been a lot closer and maybe would have, could have put on a charge the top two guys if that shoulder injury. And, you know, that's what that's a difficult part. You know, we talk about riders being injured and, and riding and how it affects them on the bike the race weekend. But you don't think about how it affects the training right. before you get to the race. Right. And I've talked to some of the other guys who are wounded this year and haven't got to train as much as they want. And they're feeling on the bike. And. You know, and for him, luckily he was strong enough to, to tough it out for those last couple laps. And now we have a little bit of time, not a lot, but it makes it hard when you have an injury mid-season to, to huh. stay in shape. And But to get on the podium for him, for him where he was at on uh, Friday is just a huge testament to him and the team. And hopefully this is what they need to kind of turn it around right. for the rest of the year. Well, and this is such a physical track too, isn't it? So, uh, you know, it isn't like he got the one where he – you can take lots of rest around the track. You're working it everywhere here. Uh, Jake, obviously, but, you know, P.J. Jacobson, you know, there's the old saying in motorsports, Roger, that after, you you know, that uh, that first win's tough. Sometimes the next few come a little bit easier. And I think P.J. internally now knows I belong here. I can do this. Yeah, and I think he believes it. And, and you know, I tell you all the time when somebody's close to winning all the time, you keep knocking on the door, eventually yep. it's going to open. And today yeah. it opened for him, and, you know, now he knows that he can do it. And, you know, he didn't win because somebody crashed or somebody broke. He beat the champ straight up today. And now, you know, you know, you can do it again. If you do yeah. it once, why can't you do it again? He almost did it twice this weekend. <laughs> exactly. So for him, it's just great. PJ's put a lot of work in this. I know he trains really hard, so it's great to see him get that reward. He's uh, – He's had some tough years, yeah. you know, and uh, he's had to dig deep, and he did that today and got uh, got rewarded for that win. And, you know, I love seeing that when a when a rider gets their first win or the first podium just because, you know, you know, they dedicate their whole life to this. They dream about it every single day. And when you train and all that, you visualize the feeling after you win a Superbike race. And right. then finally you get to actually experience that. He is a Superbike winner. That's – that's really special. And, of course, Brandon Posh, great run to fifth. Yesterday he was fast early, faded. Today he was fast and stayed fast. And Hayden Gillum, who was seventh yesterday on that hybrid Suzuki, uh, finishes in sixth today. And Josh Hayes back there in eighth, but was very fast near the end of that race. So if he hadn't had that off-track uh, off excursion, who knows where he would have been. But uh, what a fascinating race. P.J. Jacobson bringing it home over Gagne and Matthew Skolt. Wow, what a race. Medallia Superbike coverage is brought to you by Medallia, the pioneer in customer and employee experience. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Race two highlights, Jason Pridmore, tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, let's have a look at this because it was a crazy day again here at Brainerd as Jake Gagne gets that early jump. Matthew Skultz jumps in right behind him with P.J. Jacobson in tow. Brandon Posh, what a tremendous ride from him today, finishing in the top five. But you see P.J. back there going up underneath Matthew Skultz on about the fourth lap of the race. P.J. then sets sail after the number one. Now, at this point, Josh Heron had done such a good job of clearing everybody off and getting up to the back of the two leaders. And then that ended up happening with the Ducati. Something happened with it, but P.J. Jacobs was talking about this pass. He went up underneath Gagne, and it was all about the drive on the exit. He got it and put his head down for that next quarter of a lap and really opened up a small gap. At that point, Gagne had to claw his way back just to get to the back of P.J. Jacobson, but you could almost hear it in Gagne's voice. He didn't really think he had much for him once he would have got there anyways. P.J. wins, and Gagne extends his championship. Unbelievable skill for P.J. Jacobson. <laughs> And he gets to celebrate on the top step of the podium. Our coverage will continue in a moment.
All right, an absolutely beautiful afternoon here. What a race. We're not done yet. We have Mission King of the Baggers is going to be coming up in just a little bit, but we've got a bit more uh, to cover and talk about here uh, in terms of this Medallia Superbike race. Um, you know, yesterday it was Brandon Posh that faded a little bit, and Richie Escalani seemed to be a little bit quicker. And uh, today, Richie seemed to be struggling uh, at the longer that the race went on. Uh, so it kind of makes you wonder, you know, was he dealing with some issue? You even mentioned that to me uh, off mic. Yeah, it just seems like, I mean, there's something that, you know, Richie Escalante, we've seen his pace all weekend, you know, doing, just seems like something was up. And right. I'm not sure maybe there wasn't, but for him to uh, to kind of be that far back, it just seems like, you know, just didn't look the same out yeah. there. Like there was something he was struggling with. And talk about Brandon Posh, you know, we talk about it, his races at Laguna, something to start building on. This race here, he's only eight and a half seconds you know, off the lead. Yeah. You know, and in the Super I mean, that's, you know, you start he's clipping it away each week, making Absolutely. that gap closer and closer. Yeah, I think he's one of the great stories this year, coming off of a broken back, hadn't ridden at all, gets onto his super bike, uh, and is, uh, you know, putting up top five finishes in fairly short order. That's impressive. And let's not forget Josh Heron as well. Uh, probably would have had a podium there and kept that streak alive, but for a mechanical problem. So all kinds of things here. But we have two riders in the Superbike category that have to uh, make big changes to their approaches here because the next race, the last race of this weekend, they're in it. And one of them is Bobby Fong, fourth in, in uh, the Superbike race, Jamie. His best finish of the season, and he goes to start pole in the big bikes. It was an amazing effort in the Superbike race. We're already back here in pit lane getting ready for King of the Baggers. You've got the ice inside of your suit. What, what kind of uh, calmness do you feel right now as you get ready? Um, you know, I always get pretty nervous no matter what happens because, uh, you know, you know when you, uh, you're you competitive, you get a little bit more nervous. But we're just going to give it our all and uh, try to rehydrate really quick and go back out there and uh, just go for it, just like I always do. When you were going for it yesterday, you you finished second. What do you have different today, or what have you done to try and get to that top step? Just not fall asleep at the start. <laughs> That's like the main thing, you know. We, uh, we've we had pretty good pace, and uh, we had some good strategies out there, but uh, I just got to get better starts. So I'm, uh, you know, working on that, and uh, hopefully we could uh, show for it in the race. It all comes down to that start, Greg. Absolutely for him, starting on pole, he's got the speed, there's no question, and he can get it done, no question about that. Uh, the other story that's unfolding here that we're going to be following, Hayden Gillum, seventh in Superbike yesterday, sixth today, that's a hybrid bike. He really doesn't have any shot, really, at a win unless some crazy stuff happens because it's not a full-on Superbike. But, Roger, if he can put the win together in this upcoming baggers race, in the two races, the two classes, where he is absolutely competitive, he could go four for four this weekend. I hope I didn't just give him the jinx, <laughs> but uh, the guy can do it. He's been magic here this weekend. If he can win this second bagger race, BR is going to be his new favorite track. <laughs> you <laughs> no know, question. Incredible weekend and so far this weekend. So, uh, you know, great Superbike race for him, too. You look for the difference from the – the, the win is only 15 seconds for him. He's getting closer as well. But, yeah, he can go out there and win this race. We seen him yesterday, how fast he was. And, you know, he's won three races. He's wanting to close it out with another one. You bet it is. He wants to be holding that beautiful sun of his one more time uh, on the top step of the box. And he is capable of doing that. So, all right, folks. Well, to wrap things up in our coverage of Medallia Superbikes here at Brainerd International Raceway, let's head back over once again to Greg White, Jason Pridmore, and Hannah Lopa. Back at Brainerd International Raceway here in Brainerd, Minnesota. His fans still hanging out under beautiful sunny skies. After Medallia Superbike race number two. And well, Jason, we like to look at those championship point standings because Jake Gagne has 68 now over Josh Heron, Cameron Bobier, both Mon finishers, PJ Jacobson now 100 back. Well, that'll do it for us. We certainly appreciate it. PJ Jacobson adds his name to active Medallia Superbike race winners. He's our seventh in the series. Can't wait to see you at round seven and see what him and his team can do. For Handle Open, Jason Primar, I'm Greg White. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you in a few weeks from Wampum, Pennsylvania. <laughs>